My name is Jeremy Remy. I'm with the SLCC Community Writing Center, and we're going to tell you a little bit about starting your writing. Um, writing a story can be overwhelming and intimidating to start. There are lots of ways you can get started to figure out what you want to write about for your favorite place. We're going to tell you five ways that can help you get started writing a story. My name is Rachel Jardine, and I work for the SLCC Community Writing Center. One way to get ideas is to free write. In free writing, set a timer for 10 to 20 minutes. On a piece of paper, start writing down all the ideas that come into your head as you think about your favorite place. Don't let yourself stop writing for the full 10 minutes. Hold the pen or pencil loosely because your hand may begin to hurt. If you run out of ideas, don't worry. Just write the last thing you wrote over and over and over until you get a new idea. Another way of brainstorming ideas is to make a cluster. In clustering, you draw a circle in the middle of a blank piece of paper with the words, my favorite place inside. Then start to think about your favorite place. As thoughts enter your mind, draw them in on the picture. Place thoughts inside a box and connect the box back to the circle. Or if the thoughts are to connect to another box, use a line to connect back to that box. Continue brainstorming until you've filled the page. Sometimes, talking can be helpful when you are trying to write. Talk with someone you trust about your favorite place. A helpful technique is to have them ask you questions. Keep notes of what you talk about so you don't forget it when you begin to write. You can also blind write to brainstorm ideas. Blind writing means sitting at the computer and getting ready to write. Turn off or cover the screen. Start typing all the ideas and thoughts that come into your head about your favorite place. Write for 10 or 20 minutes without turning the screen back on. Sometimes, we just can't figure out how to start something. If you get stuck on the beginning, then start in the middle or even at the end. The beginning can come later. In writing, beginnings are not necessarily the first thing you write. Once you have some ideas about what you want to write, you can begin writing a story. A story is made up of three parts, a beginning, a middle, and an end. The beginning of a story is the introduction to your place and characters. The middle is where your characters begin an adventure. An end is when the character's adventure comes to a close. Your story may come out in stages or you could complete your story the first time you sit down and write. It can be helpful to read what you've written after you've finished. This allows you to make sure the story is everything you want it to be. These are just a few ideas of ways to start your writing process. It is important to remember that everyone has a different style and a different way to begin. Some of the ways we have told you about may help you, and others may not. Remember, the key to writing a story is to just get started. My name is Therese Beasley. I'm a watercolor painter. If I were trying to come up with ideas for my reflections project, I would first go to the photographs I've taken, because I take photographs everywhere I go. For instance, I like to fly fish with my husband, so I would take photographs of my husband in the river, and then when I want to start a painting, I would look at those photographs and slice and dice them to get what I needed. I love to go to Hogel Zoo with my grandchildren. When I was looking for ideas for a Hogel Zoo painting, I chose to do a painting from some photographs I'd taken of the fountain there. I gathered all my photographs, and then I put them together until I found a pleasing painting. Um, one of my favorite things to do is sit in my kitchen and read the newspaper. So I put together a still life with newspapers and flowers to reflect a very pleasing place for me. Now in your case, your favorite place might be your bedroom. So you would think, what is it about my bedroom that makes it so special to me? It might be your stuffed animals, it might be your collection of warriors, or it might be your books that someone's given you. So in that case, I would put together all the things that make that room special, and I would draw them and do my painting from that. Or your favorite place might be your grandmother's house. Well, what makes that house special to you? Is it your grandmother? In that case, you'd do a painting of your grandmother. Or is it her backyard and the tire swing? So put that together and, and make a painting of the tire swing. Um, if it's a vacation, you can take your photographs that you've taken or you could take the mementos you brought back. 
the little things like the shells from the seashore or maybe um, you brought home a toy deer from Yellowstone Park and you could use that to make your painting or your drawing. When you've assembled everything that you need for your favorite place, then you can decide what medium to use. You might want to do watercolor like I would do or you might try a beautiful color pencil rendering. You might decide to try your hand at pastels and chalk or you might even want to draw each separate object on a piece of colored paper and then put them all together into a pretty collage. Whatever you do, decide to have fun with it because that's what's most important. Hi, I'm John Schaefer. I direct a program called the Children's Media Workshop and I also am a still photographer and have been for many, many years, although I still consider myself just a beginner because you're, you're, I'm always learning. Um, photography is a very interesting art form. Um, when you look at the word itself, it means photo means light and to graph means to draw. And so what you're doing is you're drawing with light. And so if you keep that in mind, you can't miss as a photographer. That means that you're going to have to pay attention to the light. Okay? So, what is, so what's important in photography? What makes someone a good photographer? Well, what makes someone a good photographer and spurs the creativity that we would tend to say, wow, that's a creative picture, Ten, it, that gets the person on that vein of making more than just photographs you see all day long with something that really stops you and gets you to say, wow, that's a cool photograph or that communicates something to me, is really awareness. Since photography is about drawing with light, the most important part of our body when we're dealing with photography is our eyes. Now, it doesn't mean whether you see well as far as having glasses or anything like that. There are photographers that can barely see at all in some ways. But it's how you process information, how the information that comes into you is processed in your brain, and then how you see that that could become an image. Let me give you an example. In this photograph here, which is really two photographs, you'll notice that there are uh, boys being superheroes and girls being fairies and princesses. Well, when I made this photograph, I was just, I had gone to a parade, a Halloween parade, and I didn't really think about what I was going to photograph. I just got there and I kept my eyes open and my ears and sense of smell and taste and everything else that might let me know what's going on in a place and just started making some photographs, seeing how things were, what was going on there. It was only later that I realized that there's something really cool about putting these boys being superheroes and all the girls being princesses together into one picture. So I actually took two pictures and created one image out of them because it talks a lot about the roles that we play in our society, men and women. When I went there to make these photographs, I had no idea that this was going to happen. That's the key to being a good photographer and to being creative, which is seeing. The number one enemy of seeing is prejudice. The word prejudice means to prejudge something. A good photographer, probably a good human being, is someone who does not prejudge a situation. Good seeing means that you go in, you look around, you see what's there. Is the sky blue? No. Sometimes it's blue. Sometimes it's red. Sometimes it's purple. Sometimes it's clear. Is the sun yellow? Almost never. The sun is white. If you look at it, it's, mostly it's almost always white. Sometimes it'll look yellow. Sometimes it'll look red. It's really important that as someone who wants to see, which is crucial to photography, that you do away with all prejudices and just go into a situation and try to see what's really there. And there's nothing more fun than learning new things. And that's what photography is about. It's about seeing in a new and fresh way. My name is Lana Evanson, and I'm a dancer and a dance teacher. And part of what I do involves choreographing dances for girls of all ages from three to 18. And when I'm choreographing a dance, I first think of what I want to portray in the dance. I get my ideas from just general life. When you are at school or you're playing with your friends or if you're at home and your mom calls you to dinner and you have lima beans on the plate and you really don't like lima beans, so you get your idea of a dance of something that's gross, something that sounds gross to you. Or if you are having a good time with your friends, you can find a song that's really happy and upbeat 
and make a dance that shows you having fun and you can have some other friends in your dance with you so that you can have other people helping you. One place where I get my ideas from the most is definitely at home because that is where you can go outside, you can go on a walk around your neighborhood and you get ideas from watching other people and seeing things like that. You want to first pick something that you want to portray and then after that look for some music that gets you that makes you think of that emotion or makes you think what you're wanting to show in your dance. And then just think of your favorite move. The most important thing to remember about choreography and dance in general is to just have fun. Have fun doing it and do whatever makes you happy. My name is Teresa Ellis and I'm a professional musician and performing artist and I have been asked to share with you about where to get some ideas about um, making and creating new music and uh, sometimes I hear people complain um, that if I choose music that I don't play very well or I haven't uh, had very many lessons and that particular aspect of playing an instrument or singing does not have anything to do with the creative process. It doesn't have anything to do with making a, a musical piece or um, being able to create something new in music. I think that music might be a good way to express and create new ideas. The Reflections program is a great opportunity to spend time with your, your music creations and make up something without help. Think of exciting new ideas that you could find on your way. Like, what a trip. Maybe you'd look for something up. Or maybe it was down below. Now the hard part is to decide on the best music ideas and stick with it. Put them together, work on it. You stand it up, you set them down, you look at it closely, and then maybe trim it, make it bigger, you can make your own rules and play or sing what you hear in your heart. You can make it serious, you can make it smooth. And you can make it free, you can tell a story with your music, you can give the music a certain feeling, you can make it funny, you can pretend you live in a different country or planet or someplace and you can play something like what you think will be in that place. So no matter what you come up with, no matter how many ideas you have or new music that you can make, there's one thing I can tell you, that there are no right and wrong ways, there's no good or there's no bad. Write and rewrite and come up with something and finish it before the deadline and do it quick before you grow up because you just might end up having a really good experience with the Reflections program. <laughs>